moment what you are doing in our midst and what you're about to do. I pray once again you quicken your word and make it real and relevant to every one of us who hears your word. I, think once, I pray once again that you'll think through my thoughts, speak through my focal cords, yes. let your word go forth, let it accomplish that which you have set it to accomplish in every one of our hearts and lives. Yes. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory and the praise. I thank you, Father, that you're always confirming your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. I commit the ministry of the word of God into your hands, and I pray that your word will be magnified, Jesus will be lifted up and glorified, and that thy will will be done in our midst. And we give you all the glory and the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Would you please turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 5. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5. The title of this message today is Your Light is Your Identification. Your Light is Your ID. Mm -hmm. It's Your Identification. Mm -hmm. Listen to what the Word of God says here. Matthew chapter 5, I read it from verse 14. The Word of God says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Yes. This is Jesus speaking. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. This is what Jesus says here, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men. That's he's telling us, let your light shine. Yeah. Amen? Amen? That they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Why? So that they may see your good works, that's one, and two, that they may glorify God the Father which is in heaven. Two reasons why we need to let our light shine. Hallelujah. But there's a third reason here that Jesus isn't saying in these verses. It identifies who you are. Don't forget the word of God says God is light. He's expecting his children to be what? Full of light. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Like father, like son. That's the way it is. Amen. He's full of light. Yeah. He's expecting us to be full of light. Yeah. And therefore he says, you are the light of the world. Amen. Remember the Bible says when Jesus came into the world, he lit up the world. He is the light of the world. Amen. Glory to God. And his light is here still today, Amen. shining in the world. How is it, how is it shining? Through the church. Yeah. We are the candlesticks. Yes. We are the menorah. I'm talking about the church. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. The book of Revelations talks about seven churches. Chapter 1, it talks about seven candlesticks. Amen? Amen. And as you continue reading, by the time you get to chapter 2 and 3, it tells you that those candlesticks are the seven churches. The church is the light. We are to let our light shine individually and collectively. Our light is God's light. It's our light is what identifies us. It's our light that sets us apart from everyone else. What's, this, what's the scripture telling us? Some have the light of God. Some don't have the light of God. Some, some have the light of God shining brightly. Some have the light of God shining dimly. In other words, it's going dim. Some have no light at all. If you're a born-again Christian, your light ought to be shining. Amen. And it ought to not be shining dimly, but brightly for the glory and honor of God. There ought to be distinction. We live in a world of darkness. I remember shortly after I got saved, and um, when I moved to Toronto, thank God, I came across a book. I, yeah, an evangelist, TV evangelist, sent me a book. And uh, it's a booklet that he wrote. And he had an opportunity to go to heaven and spend seven hours in heaven. And uh, so he was writing about his experience in heaven. And his early chapters in his book, I have to go back and read the book, I haven't read it for a long time. He, he talks about as he was in his room praying and the angels came and got him and said, you got an appointment and took him, an appointment with God the Father, and took him to heaven. He left his body here on planet Earth and took him to heaven. And as they were traveling through the Earth's atmosphere and they got outside of that Earth's atmosphere 
and they're going through space, the second heaven, on the way to heaven. He looked back and he could see the planet Earth was covered in darkness. It was a real revelation for him because he had never seen it that way before. You and I haven't seen it that way before because we haven't been outside of planet Earth to see it the way how God sees it. Are you hearing the sense? We haven't seen it. And what he was seeing, he was seeing the earth from God's perspective. It wasn't the way God created it. But some time ago, long time ago, when sin entered in this universe, and when Adam and Eve sinned and committed high treason, and the enemy had an opportunity to come in and take over what God had intended Adam and Eve to rule over and reign over, yeah. darkness engulfed planet Earth. Yes. And it was in darkness, and remained in darkness, and darkness just grew in darkness until Jesus came, mm -hmm. approximately 2,000 years ago. Yeah. And the Bible says he is the light of the world, he lit up the world. And after he left, it's his church that carries the light. Amen. Amen. Once his church leaves, the body of Christ leaves, the light of God goes. And the earth will be full of darkness. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 2 says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and growth darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. He's speaking to his people. Yeah. We know in a short while from now, days, weeks, hours, months, on God's timetable, gross darkness shall cover the earth for at least seven years. Mm -hmm. Bible calls it tribulation years. Mm -hmm. Bible calls it Jacob's trouble. Yeah. The last three and a half years is called the Great Tribulation. It's also called the Day of the Lord. It has many names. Mm -hmm. But we know that the world will go into great darkness once God removes His lights from planet Earth. And therefore the scripture is saying, let your light shine because that is what identifies us. It sets us apart. You remember one of the last plagues in Israel? It wasn't the last one, but there was a plague where the Bible says, before God brought the Israelites out, Egypt was in darkness for three days. And the Bible goes on to say, no man moved. I read other accounts outside of the Bible where it was so bad when the darkness came, everyone just stopped what they're doing and stayed exactly where they were. If they were on the street, they stayed on the street. If they did not move because the darkness was so thick, they could not move. And the Bible says the darkness could be felt. So not only could it be, not, not, not only was it so thick that you could not see, it was felt. And no one moved. They stayed exactly where they were for three days. Imagine it. Think about it for a moment. If you, if, if, if you were in a market and when it happened, you weren't going anywhere for three days. If you're at home, you weren't going anywhere for three days. If you were in the field, you weren't going anywhere for three days. If you're on the job, you weren't going anywhere for three days. You, you just stood or sat down where you were and stayed there for three days. But here's what the Bible says. In the land of Goshen, where the Israelites were, it was full of light. Amen. Praise the Lord. There was a distinction. Praise the Lord. God made a distinction. He wants to continue to make a distinction today. Thank you, Lord. He hasn't changed. Thank you, Lord. What we read in the book of Exodus about that plague, that they're all foreshadows of what's coming. Mm. All those plagues are what's, what's coming. All those 10 plagues were against the gods of Egypt. During the seven years of tribulation, when God pours out his judgment, it's all going to be against the gods of this world. Believe me, it will be. And all what we see 
And we saw in the book of Exodus, those 10 plagues, you'll see a repetition of them, but in a greater scale, not just for Egypt, but for the entire world. Mm -hmm. The world is in darkness already and is heading into greater darkness. As soon as the church is removed, the Holy Spirit is in the church. The light that's in the church is removed. Great, gross darkness shall engulf this planet Earth. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible uh, tells us in Exodus uh, chapter 27, in verse 2, it says here that God gave a warning to the Israelites in the Old Testament. He said, he basically told them that they were not that they were to keep their lamps burning at all times. In the New Testament, it's the same message Jesus is saying to us. Keep your light burning at all time. They were not allowed or they should not have allowed their lights to go out in the Old Testament. And the Lord is saying the same thing as to individual believers, collectively as a church. We are not to allow our lights to go out. Why? Because it is our identification. Amen. It's what set the Israelites apart from the Egyptians. Light was there, but they had darkness. I'm talking about the Egyptians. Even when they were in the wilderness, the Bible says God led them in the daytime with a cloud. Protected them from the sun. At night time, he led them with a pillar of fire. If you read the scriptures carefully, the fire gave light. God is light. He's all about light. Everything about him is light. In him, there's no darkness. And he's expecting you and I, no darkness are supposed to be a part of our lives. Amen. In heaven, there's no shadows. There's no darkness in heaven. We are accustomed to shadows. When the sun shines, uh, we see our shadow. We see a shadow of a building. Why? Because there's darkness here on planet Earth. Yeah. In heaven, there are no shadows. There is no darkness, period. It is pure light. Amen. God the Father, God the Son are the ones that light up heaven. I'm talking about where God the Father abides. And therefore, when Jesus came into this world, he lit up the world. Now that he's gone, it's his church that, that is still light in the world. His light is still here. Amen. But once the church is gone, the light will be gone. Mm -hmm. And those who remain will be in gross yeah. darkness. Mm -hmm. And it will be difficult for them to find God. Mm -hmm. It will be difficult for them to, uh, to seek God, or to find the truth, to seek the true light, because there will be no true light. It's gone. Amen. This is what God wants us to avoid. He doesn't want us to be a part of this. Amen. Okay? Most people, in particular children, they don't like darkness. There's something about how we're made. We're made for light and not dark. Mm -hmm. Even those of us who live in the Northern Hemisphere, where we live here in Canada, we don't get a whole lot of sunlight in the summer. We, we like it when the sun comes out. We like it when we're able to go down to the Caribbean or places like that in the wintertime to get some sunlight and brightness. That's just human nature. A lot of people get depressed during the winter time because uh, they're not getting enough light. Yeah. We are not made for darkness. Mm -hmm. We're made for light. Praise God. In the physical realm, in the spiritual realm. Amen. So therefore we need to remind ourselves we should always be gravitating towards light. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Not darkness. Yeah. Do not be comfortable with darkness. We, you and I were not created for darkness. Mm -hmm. Darkness is a form of punishment for those who love darkness. So we see God was set in patterns. He was given types in the Old Testament to the, to the people of God. And we see here in Exodus chapter 27, verse 20, it says, And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring the pure olive oil beaten for the light. The olive oil speaks of the Holy Spirit, yeah. right? Yeah. beaten for the light so it's the oil that's gonna bring light when it's lit right mm -hmm. yes you know how a lamp works right mm -hmm. okay okay and the Holy Spirit in us is what's gonna cause the light of 
God in you to shine. No oil, no light. No Holy Spirit, no light. That's the way it is. So let me just read the words again. Thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always. What lamp? Well, again, if you read, this, if you read the verses before and after, he's talking about the, the menorah. Mm -hmm. That seven candlestick. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Hallelujah. That seven branched candlestick. We see in Leviticus chapter 24, verse 2, God says it again. This is what he says here. Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure olive oil beaten for light to cause the lamps, now it's pure, plural, to burn continually. So in Exodus, to burn always. In Leviticus, to burn continually. God is expecting the light to shine brightly all the time. And it's interesting. There's lights that were not always obedient, just like some Christians are not obedient today. Some Christians have allowed the light to go out or is allowing the light to go out. Some has gone out completely where darkness has taken over and some they're in the process of letting the light go out. Some have mixture. Some things are, not different, are no different today as it was back then. What do we see in the book of Samuel? We see in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 3, the Bible says that the people of God allowed the lamp of God to go out. This is what it says. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. That's the whole verse. They allowed the lamp to go out. Well, it turns out if you keep reading, uh, the, the high priest, Eli, was either gone blind or in the process of gone blind. So things became slack. And you know, his sons who were priests, they weren't behaving themselves. Mm -hmm. So the whole nation was moving, was in a backslidden state, if you want to call it that. They were going in another direction towards God. And when people of God are going in another direction to the things of God, their light begins to get dim and slowly goes out until it's completely out. That's the problem with um, Matthew chapter 25. Jesus talked about the 10 virgins. 10 what? Five are wise. Five were foolish. You really get very carefully. The five that were foolish, the scripture says, when the, when the call came for them to all go out to meet the bridegroom, they were all moving towards to go towards the bridegroom, but five found they did not have enough oil to last. They had oil. Take really very carefully. They had, but they did not have enough. They knew that I don't have enough oil that's going to last. And they said to the five that had enough, that had extra oil, give us some of your oil. They said, no, we're not giving it to you. We need it for ourselves. You go to the market and get your own. Well, I like the explanation Minister Paul said last week in last week's service. He said, basically, you got to go take time to go get your oil. It takes time to pray. It takes time to read the Bible. It takes time to understand the things of God. It takes time to draw close to God. That's not something that happens instantaneously. You got to put time into it. It take you got to put some effort into it. Amen. Amen. So Jesus used the illustration: go to the market and get buy oil from those. You know, it takes. It's sometimes it's a trial and error in this Christian walk. You you find out what works, what doesn't work. You find out how you find out what prayers are effective, what prayers are not effective. You find out how to work, walk in faith. You find out that certain things you were doing was not in faith. You find out what works and what doesn't work. All that takes time. There's a hymn says, works to this effect, take time to be holy. Oh yes, when you become born again, you are instantly made holy, but it takes time to walk it out. And time is running out. And if you read the scriptures very carefully, the five foolish, when they went off to see about getting oil, the bridegroom came, the ones that were ready went in, and the door was shut. Yes. And once the door was shut, it remained shut. And they came back and said, Lord, open up to us. You know, you know us. And I said, no, I don't know you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Those are people who habitually sin. Did you hear that sense? Iniquity are people who have who, who sin habitually. 
It's a habit. It's a lifestyle. They're not living clean. They're not living holy. They're comfortable with sin. And when an individual is comfortable with sin, then you're comfortable with darkness. None of us should be comfortable with darkness. Darkness irritates God. He hates darkness. You see, in the first chapter of the book of Genesis, the Bible says, in, in the first chapter, God created the heavens and the earth. That's what it says, right? Hallelujah. If you know anything about God, when you start reading the next verse, that's not how, that's not how God operates. No. He says, And the earth was without form and void. Here it is. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Something happened between verse 1 and verse 2. Because the scripture says, Darkness is upon the face of the deep. Darkness always speaks of judgment. Darkness always speaks of trouble. Yeah. Something went wrong. Something between verse 1 and 2 happened. We, 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 we kind of know what happened. We believe we know what happened according to Bible scholars. That's when Lucifer rebelled against God. But here we find the earth without void, without form and void and in darkness. Judgment is there. God hates darkness. I want you to understand how much he hates darkness. Such to the point, according to Thessalonians, the book of Thessalonians, again, you're, you're familiar with these scriptures, but we're talking about um, your light is your identification. Okay, in that light. And the Bible says in the book of Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse, uh, um, verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Why do we have to go to meet the Lord in the air? Have you ever stopped to think about that? I'll tell you why. The Lord told us what's why. Darkness irritates him. He's not going to come to planet Earth with darkness full of sin in his glory and splendor because it just irritates God. And because it irritates him, a speck of sin, a speck of dirt, if you want to call it that, all that, irritates and it's going to cause a reaction mm -hmm. so we have to go to meet them in the air are y'all catching this yeah. we have to go up and meet them in the air darkness irritates god sin irritates god Preach. everyone that's be caught up will not be in they'll be they'll be in right relationship with god where there's no darkness your light is going to be your identifier Amen. that's how god is going to identify those that belongs to him by the light that's in you. And therefore it's important that you let your light shine. It's important that you keep your lamps burning. It's important that you are full of the word of God. The Bible says in Psalm 119, it says, At the entrance of thy word it gives light. Amen. Get full of the word of God because it produces light. Get full of the Holy Ghost because it's the oil to the, to the, to the wicker that causes the light to shine forth. It's a fuel. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the Word of God. Every one of us needs to be full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Word of God. God. Those contribute to our light shining. It's our light that's going to identify us. When Jesus comes for the church, it's those whose lights are shining that's going to set you apart from others. Like a magnet. He will draw you unto himself because he's the bigger light. He knows and he recognizes his own lights. The Bible says, when we see him, we shall be like him. And the Bible says in the epistle of John, everyone that has this hope shall what? Purify himself. Everyone that has the hope about the blessed hope will take steps to make sure I'm living a clean, holy, godly life that is pleasing to God. Don't get tired of hearing about this because that's what heaven is made up of. Yes. Clean, holy people it's not made up of dirty people it's not made up of sinful people there are no robbers in heaven there are no rapists in heaven there are no murderers in heaven there are no um adulterers in heaven there are no fornicators in heaven understand this these are the things that we are not to be doing the bible is very plain and clear there are no gossipers in heaven there are no people who hate people in heaven if heaven is going to be your home, 
we've got to ensure that we're letting our light shine and we are uh, uh, we are uh, um, purifying ourselves if you should happen to get contaminated or polluted for any reason you you do not go long periods without repenting mm -hmm. as soon as you know that you've been polluted or contaminated yeah. or you've sinned or you've messed up you are quick to ask God to repent mm -hmm. the one of the reasons why God liked David is not that David was perfect none of us is perfect when Holy Ghost conviction came upon David's life he was quick to repent Praise when the prophet said to him, Thou art the man. You're guilty, David. You're the one who's committed murder. You're the one who's committed adultery. You're the one who's covered up your sins with lies and deceit. David humbled himself and repented. Amen. Other kings would have killed the prophet. Yes. But David did not take steps to kill the prophet. He did not take steps to silence the prophet. He stood back and listened and said, I am guilty. I am the one. Amen. And he humbled himself. That's why God liked him. Because he had a heart after God. We are not perfect. We will mess up from time to time. And we have messed up from time to time. But be quick to repent. Be quick to keep short lists. Be quick to uh, keep short accounts. Don't allow unforgiveness to harbor in your heart. Or resentment. Or jealousy. Or envy. Or covetousness. Or any of these things that have the potential to dim your light. And it goes unchecked. It can put your light completely out. All saints, we are called to be holy people. Amen. We are called to be clean people. We are called to be pure people. The Bible says that only the pure in heart shall see God. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to see God. You ought to want to see God. Not only do we want to see God with our physical eyes, with our, with our eyes and our new body, but we want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful daughter. Well done, my good and faithful son. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We want to see and we want to hear certain things about Him. And only the pure in heart will be able to experience that. And therefore, the scripture is telling us, your light is your identification. Amen. Or saints, in the Old Testament, in the book of Samuel, they allowed the light to go out. In the New Testament, many Christians have allowed the light to go out or is going out. Where are you on this? Seek the Lord while he may be found, saints. Make it a priority. Hallelujah. From God's perspective, night and darkness is one. John 9 verse 4 says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh, or darkness cometh, when no man can work. During the seven years of tribulation, it's not going to be worked like how it is today. And we saw, we've seen a foretaste of this past year where things have shut down worldwide, globally. So we, we, we kind of get an idea of what it's going to be like. Yeah. Amen? Amen? A foreshadowing of what is, what, what is going to come. Amen. Again, in, in the book of Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 4 and 5, the Bible says that, that we're not of the night, but we are of the light. He's talking to God's people. Okay, In, in, in verse 4 and 5, he's speaking to God's People, the believers. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. This is what it says. But ye brethren. You see, notice Paul calls them brethren. In other words, they're not strangers. In other words, they're believers. You all seen this? Amen. Amen. This is to the church. Are not in darkness. In other words, you ought not to be in darkness. You're not in darkness. You're not supposed to be in darkness. That that day should come up over, that day should overtake you as a thief. You talk about the day of the Lord. Ye are the children of light. That's who we're supposed to be. That's who we are. Amen. Remind yourself, I am a child of light. Okay? And the children of the day. We're a child of light and we're children of the day. There's a difference between night and darkness. They're one from God's perspective. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, see it's beginning to understand it's the Holy Spirit. It's going to remove us from this place into a place of light. There's something about us. We don't like darkness if we're true. Check yourself. There's something about the human nature. You go to a strange hotel or a strange place and it's pitch black and you, you go to sleep. Do you sleep with the, in a thick, thick Darkness? No, you want to have some sort of light. Even if you have to open up the wind, I mean the curtains, let some light come in from the street or something. 
Is this making sense? Mm. I just want you to say that there's something about us that we're not made for darkness. Yeah, we're made for light. Yeah. Okay? Heaven is full of light. Yeah. It's pure light. Even to the point the light shines through the gold streets. The, the, the streets of gold are transparent. So when I was reading this book of this minister who went to heaven, it was amazing to me because he, 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 he matched up with the scriptures. And when you read the scriptures, it says, oh, now I get a better understanding. The streets, as we know, are, are what? Streets of gold. Is that what the Bible says? Yes. But it's transparent gold. You can yes. see right through it. Amen. Isn't that cool? Yes. Hallelujah. And he said heaven... In particular, the, 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 where he was, it's like layers. So like, you know how here in, um, in the city of Kingston here, we're all on the same flat plane. But if this was heaven, there'll be, this will be one plane, but you go up another level, it'll be another plane, you go up another level, it'll be another plane. Are y'all following me? Yeah. And you go up another level, it'll be another plane. All this would be like one city on different planes. Are you catching me? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. And... Gold, 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 transparent. Hallelujah. If you've got a building of gold, you can imagine what that's like. Because the light of God is shining through everything. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God doesn't like darkness. He hates it. You should too. Oh, hallelujah. Have nothing to do with it. First epistle of John, verse 1. Sorry, first epistle of John, chapter 1, verse 5 says, Then... This is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Hallelujah. James chapter 1 verse 17 says, Every good gift and perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness no shadow of turning. Saints, there's no darkness at all in God at all, period. Amen. Period. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you are of the light, you will be with Jesus. Right? First epistle of John, chapter 1, verse 7 says, this is what it says. But if you walk in the light, as he is in the light, you have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible tells us. Oh, hallelujah. Saints, when darkness takes over this world, it's going to be so thick. It's going to be so dense. It's going to remove the earth out of its position. The earth is on an axis. In 2011, there was an earthquake in New Zealand. A very powerful earthquake. It moved the earth out of its axis. It moved it, literally. And from since that time, we've had issues with climate changes. Amen? I mean, I don't know why the scientists don't say this is the source of the problem. Instead of trying to blame it on something else. Right? Okay? The environment has changed from since the earth moved its axis. It's affected the, life, the wildlife. It's affected agriculture. It's affected, you, you know, you see dead birds showing up, dead fish showing up, dead whales showing up. Uh, the icebergs are melting. Mm -hmm. isn't, that, isn't that true? Yeah. The oceans are warming up ever since, more so when the earth shifted its axis. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 13 is what it says. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place. In the wrath of the Lord of hosts, in the day of his fierce anger. So when that day comes, when God has removed his church, and, 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 and God is now pouring out his judgment, it's going to be so thick in darkness, the heavens will shake, and the earth will shake, there will be earthquakes, and darkness will get thicker and thicker and thicker. But there will come a time when God will put away the darkness once and for all. At the end of the seven years of tribulation, when Jesus shows up, it's, it's over. Glory to God. It, when once complete judgment is over, darkness will be dealt with. Darkness will be judged. It'll be judged when Jesus shows up to reign on earth for, uh, seven, for, for a thousand years. And we know according to the scriptures that after the end of a thousand years, the enemy will be released out of the abyss 
for a, for a season. Only for a season. The Bible doesn't tell us how long that season is for. Yeah. And he'll go forth to the four corners of the earth and deceive many nations. They've had a thousand years of peace. They have a thousand years of Jesus reigning with the saints, with the rod of iron. Peace, prosperity, expansion. You'll probably see a lot of these planets by the end of that thousand years. You'll probably see some of these other planets populated with human population. Stop, stop and think about it, saints. They're lying waste right now, but I don't believe God intended them to ever to be waste. They're desolate right now, but I don't believe that was the intent of God in the original plan. Because when sin entered this universe, it seemed like it affected not only planet Earth, but it affected the, the planets. Are you hearing me? They're doing some exploring right now on, on Mars, the planet. If you ever see them, you can see life pictures coming from Mars. It's all desolate. If you don't know that it's Mars, you tend to think it's someplace on planet Earth. You see the sun shining brightly, but all you see is desolation. Nothing alive, no growth, nothing. You see layers and layers of mountains and rocks. You know something happened there. But saints, I believe by the time the thousand years is up, these, some, of these, some of these planets, not all of them, because some of them are not they're a gas. I'm not talking about the gas ones. I'm talking about the ones that are similar to Earth. I believe you'll see human populations on them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But God wants to deal with this. And He wants us to keep our lights shining that we're not a part of it. In a sense, a part of the darkness. Right? John chapter 3 verse 20 says, Um... It, 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 this verse is telling us that um, many do not have the light of Jesus. So in verse, John chapter 3 verse 20 says, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth the truth cometh to the light. You see, when David was reproved, he came to the light. Yes? When you're reproved, when you're rebuked, when you're corrected, when Holy Ghost conviction, run to the light. Don't run away from the light. Amen. Right? But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that, he was, that they were wrought in God. Many Christian saints are running from the word, hiding from the word of God. If you're running from the word and hiding from it, you better watch it. It means that your light is not shining or is going dim or has gone out. Many Christians are taking offense to the word of God. Right? They're not taking time to discern the difference between conviction and condemnation. There is a difference. Okay? Conviction leads to repentance. Yes? Condemnation leads to accusation from the enemy. Know the difference. God is not in the, in the business right now of condemning you. He wants to bring Holy Ghost conviction where it's needed. And Holy Ghost conviction leads to genuine, sincere repentance. But some have mixture. Some have allowed their light to be mixed. That is with darkness and light. It's not all light. It's some dark, some light. Oh, sex. Hear what the Word of God is saying. Check yourself. First epistle of John, chapter 2, verse 9 says, He that says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Check yourself. Are you allowing yourself to get in, in out of sorts to hate somebody? Despising somebody? Are you? Because if you are, you get, you're allowing mixture to come in. Okay? Luke chapter 11 verse 20, Luke chapter 11 verse 33 says, No man, when he has lighted a candle, put it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they which come in may see the light. Verse 34 says, The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, thy whole body is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. Check yourself. Verse 35 says, Take heed therefore that the light which is in thee is not darkness. 
Some Christians have mixture. Don't allow mixture. Check yourself. If the whole body therefore be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when the light, as when the bright shining of a candle does give thee light. Saints, Jesus is full of light. You should be full of light. Amen, amen. Strive to be full of light. Don't have mixture. Don't allow mixture. Don't allow these things to be in your heart. You can't be hating your fellow brother and say you love Jesus at the same time. Or despising your fellow human being and you say you love Jesus at the same time. It's not going to work. You're just deceiving yourself. Okay? When Jesus comes, he's going to come quickly. And when he comes, he's going to remove his pe people quickly from planet Earth. It'll happen so fast. Most people will not have time to think about it or to get right or to repent. Because once the trumpet starts to blow, it's over. It's too late. How long the trumpet will blow for? I don't know. It may blow for minutes. I do not know. But once it starts to blow, it's too late. Yes? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 and 52 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all not sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trump shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. According to scientists, in a twinkling of an eye, we blink as fast as one hundredth of a second. Those who measure that. That's how fast we will be changed. Instantaneously. You will not have time to think about it or to repent or to get right. It will be too late. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. This earth is going to be consumed by fire. Don't be part of it. And God has been allowing us to see what's going to be happening. We had some fires in Canada, up north in Canada, out west uh, a couple years ago. There have been fires in the United States for the past several summers. And elsewhere, all the, even in Europe last year, Italy was burning. Greece was burning. Different places. God is saying, this is what's coming to planet Earth. Yes. Listen to what Apostle Peter has to say. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition, of ungodly men looking for the hasting unto the coming of the day of, of God wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat yeah. all glory amen, to God amen. Amen. hallelujah amen. hallelujah God is going to consume all this darkness and remove and he's going to remove all of it from planet earth let your light shine, saints. Amen. Darkness will be judged. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 9 says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. He shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Oh, glory to God. That's what he's going to do. So by the time the end of the seven years of tribulation is over, God has removed the majority of the sinners out of the earth, now he will restore it. He'll come back and put it the way, put it back the way he wants it. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. So, saints, God has prepared a place of light for us. Let, let us let our light shine. We're in a place of darkness right now. But don't get comfortable with it. Don't begin to like it. Okay? Amen. Don't embrace it. Amen. Glory to God. And Revelation chapter 21 verse 23 says, The city had no need of the sun. This is talking about the new Jerusalem. Neither the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. God the Father, God the Son is the light thereof. Amen. They light up all of heaven. Oh, praise God. You can see that their light is far different from the light of the sun. 
it's a different light. It's a brighter light. It's more powerful than light. It, it, the light coming from God the Father, God the Son, outshines the sun. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Again, in Revelation chapter 22, verse 5, it says, And there shall be no night there. Again, night and darkness is the same, right? Yes. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and he shall reign forever and ever. We are going to a place of, the, of light. Yes. And it makes sense. Children of light should be in a place of light. Amen. Children of darkness should be in a place of darkness. Don't compromise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you choose light, you choose Jesus. When you choose darkness, you choose the enemy. When you dismiss Jesus, you are really choosing darkness. Okay? And therefore the scripture says, let your light shine before men. Preserve your light. Keep it shining. Protect your light. Take steps to ensure your light keeps shining. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's the light that's within you that Jesus will see when the time comes to snatch us out of this place. It's what's going to identify you. Do not forget that. Okay? It's your identifier. Hallelujah. We're not like others. We're not in darkness. See yourself different. Okay? Hallelujah. When God sees us and everyone else, there should be a distinction between us and them. We can't see our own light. We, we, we cannot. Unless he opens up our eyes. But God knows it. God knows our light. He sees it very plain. And you know what? <laughs> The kingdom of darkness knows those whose lights are shining. Yes. Okay, we know that. All right. It's in the physical realm. We, can't, we can walk past each other on the street, on the highway, or in the mall, or whatever. And we, unless you know, happen to know the individual, you cannot know that's a Christian, that's a Christian, that's not a Christian. Right. It's all hid to us with our natural eyes. But in the spiritual realm, it is open. Those who work wickedness, those who serve Satan, those who are into witchcraft, those who are doing deep things in the kingdom of darkness, they know who the Christians are. Amen. They know the weak ones too, and they know the ones who are shining light, and the ones who are shining brightly, they, they, they avoid them because they know if they get messed with them, they're going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. That's right. And they know those whose light is going out. Yeah. Do you see? The scripture is clear. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, it says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are His. How does He know them, saints? By their lights. Okay. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The foundation of God standeth sure, and God knows those who are His. They've got a seal. Glory to God. And if you name the name of Christ, depart from iniquity. Have nothing to do with it. Oh, glory to God. Depart, saints. Separate. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is all light and he doesn't change. He says, I change not. Hallelujah. Psalm 104 verse 2 says, Who covers thyself with light, with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. Glory to God. Oh, saints, the earth is going to be removed of its place. The earth is going to be covered with more darkness as the days come. Hell is darkness. Yes? So what are we to do? Prepare your hearts to seek the Lord with all of your heart. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13 says, And ye shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all of your heart. 
Hallelujah. Joel chapter 2 verse 12 says, Therefore also now says the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all of your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning. Why? So that when Jesus comes, he'll see your light. Seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Why does the scripture tell us that? There'll come a time when he cannot be found and he won't be near. While he is, can be found, while he's near, this is the time, saints, to seek him. In fact, the scripture says in Isaiah 55 verse 6, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Close, praise God. This is the opportunity, saints. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Once God removes his church, then no lights will be left on planet Earth. Okay? Hallelujah. Strengthen yourselves while we have the opportunity, saints, in God. Call out to the Lord, and he will answer you. Glory to God. And, and, and watch what the Lord will do. Glory to, so as you go to God in prayer in a moment, this is Lord, I, I, I'm asking you to assist me. Help me to let my light shine brighter and more effectively. Not to allow it to go dim. Not to let it go out. But to, but to shine as brightly as it possibly can. And if there's anything in my life that's hindering it from shining, please reveal to me and show me, what to, show me how to deal and dress it. I want you to help me and assist me. Mm. Glory to God. Yes, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Again, our light is our identifier. Again, how do we know this? Proverbs chapter 20 verse 27 says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. It's your spirit man that's lit up. No wonder we can't see it with the natural eyes. Amen? Psalm 18 verse 28 says, for thou will light my candle, and the Lord my God will light my darkness. Oh, glory to God. We want God to light our darkness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Saints, let's consider what we've heard today. I believe the Lord is talking to us. Yes? Hear what he's saying to us. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let me close with this. John chapter 12, verse 35 says, And Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you, for he that walketh in darkness knows not where he goeth. See, those who are in darkness are going to be groping. And those who are left behind after the, after the rapture takes place, they're going to be groping in darkness, searching for light, and it's not going to be so readily available. You know, it's, it's hard to find something in the darkness, isn't it? You need light to search for things. So it's going to be very difficult for someone in the darkness to find the light because they need light to find the light. Okay? Again, Jesus said in John chapter 12, verse 36, he says, While you have the light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. So that, in other words, you can continue to be a children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and he hid himself from them. What are we to do? Believe in the light. While you have the light, the light comes, the word, the light comes from the word of God. Believe the word of God. Believe the gospel. Believe what you've been hearing. Amen. Hallelujah. Light and darkness don't mix. Light dispels darkness. Glory to God. Amen. Don't mix the two. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? There ought to be what? A separation. Amen. If there's no separation in this planet Earth, then there won't be a final separation when Jesus comes for his church. There has to be a separation now in this life so that when Jesus comes, 
it's obvious that you're not part of this darkness. You got more light in you than darkness. You're full of light. And the Lord will say, yeah, you're one of mine. As the Bible says, when we see him, we shall be what? Like him. And everyone that has this hope purifies themselves. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Saints, your light is your identification. It's your ID. Glory to God. It's your passport to heaven. You want to fly over to Europe? You need a passport. It identifies who you are. You want to go to heaven? You have to have the light of heaven in you shining brightly. No light? You're not going to go anywhere. So let's take heed to what we're hearing. This is serious. It's serious to God. It should become serious to us. He's full of light. We should be full of light. So stop and examine your heart. Is your heart been right? Is your attitude been right this past week? How are you looking at life? Are you walk around with a negative attitude? You're feeling ill about people, talking ill about people? These are things. Because if you're talking ill about people, you know what's sooner or later that leads to resentment, hatred. And the scriptures are very clear. If you hate your brother, then the light of God is not hanging, is, is no longer in you. It's, it's leaving, it's on the way out. Amen? Amen? Let your light shine. Don't let anybody stop you from letting your light shine. Amen? Hear what the Spirit of God is saying. We'll come down to the wire. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's stand. We're going to close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you all the glory and the praise and we want to say thank you so much for your holy word today. We thank you for reminding us that our light is our identification. Thank you for reminding us that we are to let it shine. And I'm asking you to help everyone that hears this word today to take the steps that is necessary to draw closer to you so their light, your light in them will shine brightly and effectively and shine as bright as it possibly can. Any traces of darkness in any one of your people's hearts, I'm asking you to show it to them, bring Holy Ghost conviction where it's required and help them to take necessary steps to get rid of it and to let your light shine brightly and effectively in Jesus mighty name Amen